Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Stephen County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 77. This is the Friday, November 12th, 2021 edition of Library Connections. Jumping right in with the top five fiction bestsellers for this week from the New York Times at number one, Game On by Janet Ivanovich, the 28th book in the Stephanie Plum series. Diesel and Stephanie track the international computer hacker Oswald Wednesday. At number two, The Judge's List by John Grisham, the second book in the Whistler series. Investigator Lacey Stoltz goes after a serial killer and closes in on a sitting judge. At number three, The Stranger in the Lifeboat by Mitch Baum. After a ship explodes, nine people struggling to survive pull a man who claims to be the Lord out of the sea. At number four, Better Off Dead by Lee Child and Andrew Child, the 26th book in the Jack Reacher series. Reacher helps an FBI agent looking for her missing brother and takes on a foe named Denna Docker. And at number five, The Lincoln Highway by Amor Tolls. Two friends who escaped from a juvenile work farm take Emmett Watson on an unexpected journey to New York City in 1954. Moving on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for this week, at number one, The Lyrics, 1956 to the Present by Paul McCartney a two-volume celebration of 154 songs with handwritten texts, paintings, and photographs from the songwriter's archives. That one sounds like a perfect holiday gift. But I digress at number two, Immune by Philip Detmer. The founder of the YouTube channel, Kurt Stegat, gives an overview of elements of the body's immune system. At number three, The President and the Freedom Fighter by Brian Kilmeade. The Fox News host gives an account of the relationship between Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. At number four, The Storyteller by David Grohl, a memoir by the musician known for his work with Foo Fighters and Nirvana. And at number five, Going There by Katie Couric. The former anchor of the CBS Evening News and Today describes some of the personal and professional challenges she faced. Our first recommended read of the week is the new John Connolly thriller, The Nameless Ones. Early in bestseller Connolly's outstanding 19th paranormal thriller featuring main P.I. Charlie Parker, two Serbian war criminals, brothers Spiridon and Radovan Vuskan, torture and murder De Jagger, a Dutch fixer, and three other members of De Jagger's Amsterdam household. These killings are the latest bloodshed in a cycle of violence that began years earlier, when a relative of De Jagger was killed by Serbian gangster Andrei Buda, a cousin of the Vuskins. De Jagger's American assassin friend Lewis, a colleague of Parker's, fatally shot Buda, who committed atrocities during the Balkan Wars in the 1990s, on De Jagger's behalf. Aided by a contract in American intelligence, 
who has his own reasons for wanting the buskins taken down, Lewis travels to Europe to avenge de Jagger's murder. Connolly makes all his characters, even the most evil, multifaceted while keeping his audience on the edge of their seats. Series fans won't mind that Parker is off stage much of the time and that the plot is less dependent on supernatural elements than usual. This is another intelligent and haunting nail biter. And on a reader's note, this is the 19th book in the Charlie Parker series. If you'd like to start reading the series from the beginning, check out book one, which is called Every Dead Thing. Our second recommended read for this week is the new Neil Stevenson novel, Termination Shock. In the all too near future, when unlikely weather events and natural disasters aren't so unlikely anymore, an eccentric and wealthy Texan makes a move against climate change. Suska, better known as the Queen of the Netherlands, crashes her plane on an airstrip in Waco, Texas, when wild pigs overtake the runway as she's landing. Suska's visit to America isn't exactly official, so she and her team enlist Rufus, who happens to be on the runway, hunting the vicious boar that killed his young daughter, to help them get to Houston to meet T.R. Schmidt. While America is, as a nation, quote, a clown show, Schmidt has the money to do as he pleases. And what he pleases to do is construct a massive gun that can shoot sulfur into the atmosphere and help ameliorate the effects of global warming. He's invited people like Saska, some Venetian aristocrats, and representatives of Singapore and other places that have the most to lose from a rising sea level to see what he's been working on. When Schmidt starts up his gun and it actually works, a huge global debate emerges. Is Schmidt's geoengineering scheme the best step to take? What will happen to global weather patterns with all the sulfur in the air? Will other countries choose to build their own guns or try to put a stop to Schmidt's actions? Stevenson's latest novel clocks in at more than 700 pages, and as usual, they practically turn themselves as the multiple storylines twist together. This book is the rare climate thriller that's realistic about political stonewalling in the face of disaster, yet unafraid to imagine a possible future where people might actually come together and try to save civilization. The kind of climate change fiction we all need. And that's the Kirkus Review. Our first audiobook recommendation of the week is the new mystery Betrayal on the Bowery by Kate Billy. New York City, summer 1889. Society Girl turned investigative journalist Genevieve Stewart and wealthy Daniel McCaffrey have arrived at the docks to see their friends Rupert and Esme Milton off on their honeymoon. But the romantic idol comes to a screeching halt when a crazed man bursts into their stateroom screaming about demons and then drops dead right before their eyes. The dead man is Marcus Dalrymple, who had once asked Esme to marry him. And inside Marcus's pocket, Daniel finds a medallion that they trace to a lower east side bar called Boyle's Suicide Tavern. The medallions, it turns out, are prizes given to anyone who spends the night in the tavern without dying. 
Clearly, a visit to Boyle's could prove hazardous, but it may offer the only clue to Dalrymple's death. Genevieve and Daniel barely escape the bar with their lives, but learn that the crime could have a connection to the recent disappearance of a sugar baron's daughter. Only after another young man plunges to his death from a rooftop bar, also screaming about demons, do the pieces of the puzzle begin to come together. The clues lead Genevieve and Daniel, far from the city's moneyed environs, to a reputedly haunted mansion deep in the Bronx. There, they will confront the truth and the demon at its heart. And on a reader's note, this is the second book in the Gilded Gotham Mystery Series. If you'd like to start reading at the beginning of the series, check out book one, Deception by Gaslight. Our second audiobook recommendation for this week is the new novel, Comfort Me with Apples, by Catherine Valente. The audiobook is narrated by Karis Campbell. This gem of a novella from Valente packs a lot of intrigue into a brief page count and short audio. Sophia lives in the upscale gated community of Arcadia Gardens, a supposed utopian oasis under the management of the Arcadia Gardens Homeowners Association. The rules in Arcadia are strange and specific, forbidding, among other things, dancing and the building of structures for keeping bees. But all are said to be in favor of purity and harmony. Sophia's life is basically a fairy tale, complete with a beloved husband at her side. But even as the reader takes in the frothy, enchanted atmosphere, there are hints that Sophia is teetering in an illusion that will soon launch her in darkness. This turns out to be the case when Sophia discovers a mysterious silver hairbrush and a dark tangle of hair in a locked drawer of their home, and her fairy tale perceptions begin to dissolve. A masterful late reveal proves this to be a clever reworking of a famous story, reframing all that came before. Though there are some moments of excessive exposition, Valenti packs in enough charm, curiosity, and foreboding to make this worthwhile. Fans will be delighted. And that is the Publisher's Weekly Review. So before we jump into specifics on our streaming recommendations for this week, I want to point out that the streaming recommendations for this week are taken from a neat recent article that appeared on the NPR site titled, Nor Films You Can't Miss. And the article recommended three top-notch Nor classics. So those are the three streaming recommendations for this week. And having said that, let me jump in and tell you a little bit about them. The first streaming recommendation is the 1992 Nor classic, Deep Cover, directed by Bill Duke and starring Lawrence Fishburne, Jeff Goldblum, and Lyra Angel. Film Nor hits the mean streets of 1990s Los Angeles in this stylish, and subversive underworld odyssey from veteran actor-director Bill Duke. Lawrence Fishburne stars as Russell Stevens and John Hall, a police officer who goes undercover as the partner of a dangerously ambitious cocaine trafficker in order to infiltrate and bring down a powerful Latin American narcotics ring operating in L.A. But the further Stevens descends into this ruthless world of money, violence, 
and power, the more disillusioned he becomes, and the harder to make out the line between right and wrong, crime and justice. Steeped in shadowy, neon-soaked atmosphere and featuring Dr. Dre's debut solo single, this unsung gem of the 90s black cinema explosion delivers a riveting character study and sleek action thrills alongside a furious moral indictment of America. And that's streaming recommendation number one. Our second streaming recommendation for this week is the 1944 Noor classic, Double Indemnity, directed by Billy Wilder and starring Fred McMurray, Barbara Stanwyck, and Edward G. Robinson. Fred McMurray and Barbara Stanwyck star in the gripping film Noor classic, Double Indemnity directed by Academy Award winner Billy Wilder. A calculating wife encourages her wealthy husband to sign a double indemnity policy proposed by a smitten insurance agent, Walter Neff. As the would-be lovers plot the unsuspecting husband's murder, they are pursued by a suspicious claims manager. It's a race against time to get away with the perfect crime in this suspenseful masterpiece that was nominated for seven Academy Awards, including Best Picture. And our third streaming recommendation is another Nora classic. It's the 1944 film, Laura, directed by Otto Preminger and starring Gene Tierney, Dana Andrews, and Clifton Webb. Nominated for five Academy Awards, this stylish mystery thriller twists and turns with new suspects, new evidence, and unexpected revelations. A wealthy journalist becomes entranced with a beautiful young career woman named Laura. But shortly before her wedding to a dashing young playboy, she is found murdered. Stirred by her portrait, the detective assigned to her case finds that he, too, is strangely under Laura's spell. This is a terrific film if you haven't seen it, with, with an interesting twist, shall we say. And I've got a Hoopla update. The Hoopla update checkout limit has now been raised to 10. So you can now enjoy more Hoopla items each month. And if you want to binge a TV series of 10 episodes, we got you covered. And speaking of Hoopla, on to our Hoopla recommendation of the week. And this week's recommendation is a double feature recommendation of two classic Westerns, The Magnificent Seven and its sequel, Return of the Seven. Yul Brynner stars in both in the original film, The Magnificent Seven, from 1960, he's one of seven master gunmen pitted against an army of marauding bandits in a rousing action tale that launched the film careers of Steve McQueen, Charles Bronson, and James Coburn. In Return of the Seven, Brenner returns as a good guy dressed in black who calls on five gunfighters including Robert Fuller, Warren Oates, and Claude Atkins to defend a town under siege by vicious outlaws. So two classic Westerns. If you're in a Western mood this weekend, check out The Magnificent Seven and Return of the Seven, both available through Hoopla. Library Connections videos premiere on Facebook Fridays at 1 p.m and may also be found on the Southeast Steven County Library's YouTube channel. Have questions about this weekly video cast? Let me know. Send an email to me at rymorell at stls.org and I'll get back to you. And a note on library hours. The library is open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. 
to 7 p.m. We're open on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and we're closed on Sundays. The library's website is found at ssclibrary.org and you can find a whole host of information on our website about upcoming events. You can access our catalogs, schedule a curbside appointment, and much more. Again, that's ssclibrary.org. StarCat and its companion app, BookMine. StarCat is the catalog of physical library materials available to all cardholders of the public libraries in the Southern Tier Library System. STLS encompasses the public libraries in Steuben, Chemung, Yates, Schuyler, and Allegheny counties. StarCat is found online at starcat.stls.org. And the companion app BookMine, which is B-O-O-K-M-Y-N-E, is available in your app store. If you'd rather access the catalog through the app, download it from your app store. The Digital Catalog and its companion app Libby. The Digital Catalog is available online at stls.overdrive.com. The Digital Catalog features ebooks, downloadable audiobooks, and a handful of streaming videos. And if you would rather access the Digital Catalog and its content through an app, the app is called Libby, L I B B Y. You can download it from your App Store and access the same catalog of items through the app. Hoopla, and of course it's a companion app also called Hoopla. The Hoopla catalog features ebooks, comic books, full-length albums, downloadable audiobooks, and streaming videos, including both TV shows and movies. All Hoopla items are available for instant checkout for Southeast to Bend County Library cardholders with a maximum of six checkouts per month. The Hoopla catalog is available online at hooplaDigital.com, or you can download the app to your mobile device or smart TV. Communicating with the library. An important thing, if you have questions about library materials or services, you are welcome to go the traditional route and simply give us a call. The library's telephone number is area code 607-936-3713. We have the same phone number we've had for decades. So if you have an old phone book floating around the house, you'll find our number in your phone book too. And you can also connect with the library via social media. The library has pages on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Library blogs. We have five of them. We have the Book Club for Adults blog, which is found at ssclbook.club. And you guessed it, that one focuses on the monthly adult book club. We have the Corning NY History blog, which is our local history blog, which is found at corningnyhistory.com. Creation Stationery, our makerspace blog, found at creationstationery.com. Story Musings, a blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells, found at storymusing.blogspot.com. And Tech and Book Talk, a readers, viewers, and listeners advisory, which is found at ssctech.com. And here briefly are our references for this week. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great week.